Uh, Shalom. Shalom. Uh, this is Ozzy McGuire. This is a Korea. Uh, we Hebrew Israelites coming at you with another lesson. Okay. You know, first and foremost, as we already are facing the east, east I want to say, call Halagim, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Arakah Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Greater Millstone, where we learn the truth from and who rule well. Salutations to the Bakiyar, the elect, the 144,000, that's 12,000 men from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes of Israel consist of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that will also come looking, at, come looking like these other nations. And as always, it's an honor and privilege to continue to do this work. The water, Yahweh Bashan Yahweh for allowing us to do such. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want that? Yeah, come on. All right, this is Psalm chapter 119, and I'm going to start at 25, is that good? It says, My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. Yeah, we're being activated or quickened, you know, but uh, first, you know, being activated as being stirred up like Nessie Quick. <laughs> you know, we're being activated with the Holy Spirit, the, the angels are working on our minds. And revealing the secrets, the mysteries of Yahweh Bashan Yahweh unto us. And he has also allowed us to retain that information, meaning he hasn't closed the door as it speaks in the book of Revelation, which that door that can be opened and can be shut only by Yahweh Bashan Yahweh is your mind. So we have these revelations. You know, we're cleaving onto them. Good. That's right. Um, I don't know if you wanted to go through the whole chapter, but when you jump to verse 50, he said, I was going to say, you just get all the meat off the bones. Right? God. Okay. Well, we keep, well, I'm going to jump, and then if the Spirit has it, we'll come back to it. This is uh, verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Right. Yeah, this is our hope, man. That's why you hear brothers all throughout the four corners saying we hope that we are the, of the elect. That's right. And then we speak, and others as us speak of the hopeful elect, man. Because none of us know if we're of that number yet, man. You know, but yet we have confidence in certain experiences that we persevered in that, you know, give us comfort that we may be a part of that number, man, as long as we endure on to the end. As long as we rehearse the righteous acts, you know, following the, keeping the commandments and, you know, being brotherly, which that's what this whole truth is all about, the first two commandments. Now, if you don't have one, then pretty much you don't have the other, man. You know? This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, the evidence of things not seen, man. You know, that's what faith is. That's what we have confidence in. You know, these words. Because we're, we were already given this word. And now it's just being drawn out of us. You know, because we're that, Yahweh Shah we be a part of that number. We're that predestined number, the elect, the first fruits. That had the word, that had Yahweh Shah in the beginning. You know, so that's the reason why we were given the gift of faith to believe in, a, in, in something that is not seen as a yet. But really, it's, it's, it's manifesting itself. <laughs> Going back to uh, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, it speaks about in the end will manifest itself. You know, and that's what we're going to go into. We're going to go into World War Three. Man. You know, because the end is manifesting itself. This is uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, mm -hmm. though you once knew this. Huh. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. But the point is, the Lord is putting in remembrance all the things like the understanding of this truth, okay, prophecy, because the prophecies were written before the world began. 
And the Lord is, is reminding us or putting that spirit on us to remind us or allow us to remember, although we once knew this, man, like the brother was going into, you know? We knew this before. The word was in us, okay, if we are part of that number. Because remember when Yahweh Shai created everything, the first thing he created was the first fruits, the angels, the elect. And they went around creating the universe, everything you see. That's why Yahweh Shai is called the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. Because that's the only thing the Heavenly Father created was Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai went around creating everything else. All things. Things seen and unseen. But you can't see the angels, bro. Right, right, right. You know? Unless they manifest themselves. Yeah, that's right. You know, we can't see actual elements. You know? With, what I'm saying is uh, the actual elements that were utilized to create everything you see. Because as the scripture says, you know, things that are seen were created by things that were unseen. All right? With the natural eye, you can't see the angels. With the natural eye, you can't tell if somebody's uh, of the elect or not. Okay? Right. That's what I'm going to Oh, okay. uh, this is Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature? Exactly. The, the, the invisible power is talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Right. All right? And when you look up his name in the Hebrew, okay, well, when you read uh, in the scriptures, Lord, all capital, is the Heavenly Father's name, Yahweh. Or when you see Jehovah, it's it's Yahweh. And that name simply means the existing one, or He is. Which, you know, in this present life, nobody's seen the Heavenly Father. You know? And He is the invisible power. He exists in a different plane. But, who is the image of Him? Okay, the only begotten of, of Him, which is Yahweh Shai. Who is Yahweh Shai? That's why who was it, Philip? When he said, he said, show us the Father. And Yahweh Shai said, you've been with me the whole time. You see me, I look like my Father. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is the image of the Heavenly Father. And that word image doesn't necessarily mean how you look, although you can equate it with that. But his mannerisms, his, his uh, morals, who he is, uh, you know, yeah, and be like, you're just like your father. God, God. You know, just like you hear that from your mom a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, just like your dad. God. You know? And you don't necessarily have to look like your dad, but it's just the way you conduct yourself. Yeah, it's very. Because Yahweh Shai came to fulfill what the Heavenly Father had, um, the prophecies of the Heavenly Father. You know, go ahead, bro. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, yeah. visible and invisible, yeah. whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. See, there it is. See, so Yahweh Shai went around, he created everything. He created us. He created the angels. All right. He created. He created every the angels on the left hand, the demons, everything. The heavenly Father gave him the blueprint, and he went out and created everything you see and things that you can't see. Okay. We want to talk about Esau, the devil? Yahweh I created him. <laughs> you know. You know. Satan. Yahweh I created Satan. Okay. To the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. That's why when we pray, we say Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because you can't get to the Heavenly Father without Yahweh Shai. Okay. Uh, this is St. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was a power. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So without Yahweh Shai, nothing, nothing, nothing came, to, nothing would come to existence. Okay, in the beginning was the word, which the word is Yahweh Shai. Okay, the Heavenly Father said, let it be. There came Yahweh Shai. And everything that the Lord, the Heavenly Father, wanted to come to existence, 
he did through his son. Okay. Mm -hmm. God it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And that's why we're out here set up to teach you this, to, to remind you, to stir up your mind. Through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, without that spirit, all right, we wouldn't have this wisdom. Okay, we wouldn't have this understanding. But the Lord woke us up so that we could wake you up. We're out here for the elect's sake. We're not out here for every Israelite, man. Okay, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, is about quality over quantity. You got these other Israelites, they want, they want followers, they want big camps. We don't want that, man. To hell with two thirds of our people. The majority of our people are demons, man. Okay, we are here for that quality. We are here for the elect sake. We we endure all things for the elect sake. That's why being in this truth, you can't be selfish, man. You know, sometimes you're down the spirit, you know. Right. But then you got to you got to rebuke yourself because it's a bigger picture. It's not about us individually, man. Okay, it's about us collectively. Collectively. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's about us collectively. That's why the scriptures always talk about having brotherly love. Not hating your brother. Okay? Because it's about one big army, man. One big family, man. Okay, it's not about individualism. Hey, you remember, uh, were you uh, growing up in the time of the Power Rangers? Yeah, yeah. And they had, they all had to come together to form that big robot. Yeah. I forgot what it's called. Uh, uh, Zord. Megazord. Yeah, Megazord. Yeah. Just imagine if one part of that robot was like, I'll call y'all. Well, the Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah, yeah like all the same era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Raphael. Yeah, yeah. They always go renegade. Yeah, you go rogue. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then all the three, the three, uh, Michelangelo, Donatello, Donatello, and Leonardo had to come rescue his ass all the time. Good. And then Master Sprinter would be all mad and shit. You have to rebuke him. Yeah. Hey, son, you know, you gotta let go of that shit. Yeah. Because he's hella prideful. Yeah, because that's when they were, they were like teenagers at that time. God. I think they didn't come into like adulthood until when he went to Japan. Mm -hmm. And the time travel and shit. Yeah. Well, to back up your point, this is Psalm chapter 133 and verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right. Going back to that word uh, unity, in the military or anything, you're a unit. Right. And a unit is is one of many. You know, they have that game called uh, Army of One, or what was yeah. it called? The yeah, Army of One thing. Where you were two dudes. Yeah. But you were, you were a unit. You know? And if they broke apart, well, it wouldn't be the same. You had Double Dragon, yeah, yeah. which is a resemblance of the Northern and the Southern Kingdom. Yeah. And they couldn't be at their, their, their they, they weren't at their uh, main power unless they were together. Remember, they'd have the medallions, and they connect them, mm -hmm. and then they, they, they power up. Was that how, uh, I know they deal with rings, but then the people in Captain Planet had to come together with yeah, the rings. Yeah, yeah. They had a full uh, force of their power. And there was a slogan to it. You know, there was a yeah. slogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Going back to the 80s and 90s. Yeah, man. But that was the good old days, man. This shit that they got now is just... It's not the same. It ain't the same. It just heavily pushed towards that whole... Uh, what, what we just went into? Darkness. Mm-hmm. That LGBT and all that other shit, man. Okay. <laughs> Which is off according to the scriptures, man. That's right. why we go hard on it because it's a demon. It's a, it's a very uh, demonic, seducing spirit. And when you when you go into the word demon, the word demon means influencing or seducing spirit. Right. Which Esau, the so-called white man, he's the biggest witch and warlock to ever exist. He's the modern day Chaldean. He's casting that spirit out in the world to what? Seduce and influence your children, uh, your brothers, your, you know, your family, your woman, to bug out, man. Right. To bug out and do demonic things, man. Which that that that's one of the heaviest abominations you, you, you can be part of. You know? According to the scripture, according to the truth. That's not a lifestyle, that's a death style. It doesn't produce anything but death. 
disease is back. You know? And I know we're, we're all over the place, but hey, this is where it is. I mean, we're still on track because it's all going to make sense at the end. God. You know, the spirit is moving the way it is because we're telling you people that you're in darkness. God. And now we're telling, we're finna tell you that you don't even realize that we're about, we're pretty much in World War Three. <laughs> it is World War Three. Yeah, so it's not like we're going all over the place. We just, you know, we're hitting certain points. You know, tell them where you people are going off. I got a quick one. Let's get some. Yeah, I got some queued up with you, though. This is um, this is Isaiah chapter nineteen, verse fourteen. Yahweh Bashimi Shah had Nimu a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Yeah, man. A lot of y'all brothers are familiar with being drunk, man. My masters of this world can't function without some type of substance. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it is, man. Yeah. You know, so a lot of you, you went to the club before, you went to the bar, and you see how wasted certain people get, especially these women, man. <laughs> these women stumble out, just as, just as the men, the men, women, they stumble out of the bar, you know, and every time they try to get their equilibrium back and they try to get themselves back together, they stumble again. And that's exactly how this society is, man. You know, that's how, when you even go into politics, you go into the presidency, the presidency is a joke, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody's waking up to a, the fact that it's nothing but a sham, man. It's a puppet show. <laughs> I mean, you got this dude reading the, the teleprompter and he can't skip little parentheses where it says repeat this line. <laughs> so, so he just like, he, he says it, uh, and then he stumbles on repeating the line. So you know this place is done, man. Yeah, yeah, you got Biden fucking falling asleep, shitting on himself, yeah, uh, uh, not being able to recite the fucking papers that happened to him, uh, you know. Yeah, and, uh, and Kamala Harris, she ain't nothing but a zombie up there, man. What is she there for, man? Yeah, she eating my. Yeah. Owning mm -hmm. slaves, and I believe it was uh, the, the was it the West Indies or Jamaica, mm -hmm. somewhere in the Caribbean. Yeah. I think her uh, her grandfather was an Elamite. Oh, was he? Was it, she Elam or she? Elam? I think she was Elam. Oh man, yeah, I know she ain't no she ain't, she no, Israelite. ain't, she ain't no Israelite, but you get a you niggas are so simple. You get anybody that uh, black up in there or look resemblance of black think they that they for you. And that's the spirit that, that's how you know they're Israelites. Because they'll set anybody up to lead them besides those of their own people, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, they said Caesar's our king. Yep. <laughs> and then it tells you in Deuteronomy, I believe the 18th chapter, don't set no one of a other nation above you, man. Okay. But all specific king of another nation. Right, right. All, but all people are, are, are uh, Always doing that, man. Mm -hmm. And the most high is always jacking you up. Yeah, Jake want to get in where he fit in, you know? He want to he be part of the, uh, the so-called winning, winning team, you know? Winning side. Which he saw testing the fall. Okay. Yeah. You know, our people, our people are, uh, our people are lost, man. That's why we're set up once again. For the elect's sake. Because the elect going to snap out. The elect going to, Realize that this all bullshit, you know? Excuse my French. I got a prayer, you got some? Mm -hmm. All right, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Rise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yahweh by Shimei is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh by Shimei shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. So, so in the kingdom, okay, even even now, let's just say even now, our people are going to get gathered together through this word, man. And that brightness, you know, that glory, it, it, it starts with Yahweh Shai, okay, because he is the word. Right, and then the scriptures also say, 
that the kingdom is within us. Exactly. So the kingdom starts with the first fruits, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then in the kingdom, that's when the rest of the two thirds are going to come back as, you know, children be born again. You know, then they're going to be in their right minds. They're going to have the laws written within them. Okay. You know, but the kingdom's already here. That's why it's important to be a part of that kingdom and being a part of that kingdom starts with the brotherhood, man. The brotherhood is the kingdom too. Mm -hmm. This is Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And that, that's not talking about a kingdom coming down. Although, like the brother mentioned, we are the kingdom. So, what I meant was, you're not going to see a castle. It's not talking about a city coming down. It's talking about the elect coming down. The people, okay, that are in fact going to have that city built. Okay, New Jerusalem. All right. But just like the brother said, you know, the kingdom is within us. You know, we are the kingdom. And that's the kingdom you're going to see descending. Is the elect men coming down from the chariots. Yeah. You know. What? Yeah. Yes, it must. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is, uh, well, I had something else uh, to prove. Something, but no, let's just uh, skip what I have here. Unless you want to go back to the. Uh, There's something. That's what you thought. Psalms. Um, yeah, let's go back to that. So this is Psalm back again. Um, 119. Uh, 119. And verse 26. 126. Okay. Oh, you said 126? Um, It says, it is time for the Lord, for thee, Yahweh Bashi Yahushai, to work, for they have made void thy law. Yeah, it's time for him to work, man. That's what we think. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie, man. When I heard that scripture by uh, Zaquan uh, Ariola and Downs, I was like, man, that's a bad, that's a bad scripture, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's time for him to work, man. That's what, that's what the scriptures say, man. Because they did what? They made void his law. You know? That's why you're hearing all these things that you people are neglecting to want to hear all throughout the news. Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, Israel, Iran, NATO, Russia. All these different nations is uh, rising up against each other, man. Just as Yahushua informed his disciples about the what was going to happen in the time of his coming back you know when the great awakening 2007 on youtube you know when you know his words start to flourish and go throughout the four corners of the earth via the unicorn you know this word is going out already man and as it says in saint matthew it says then shall the word go throughout the world and then the end shall come not quote him verbatim, you know? So as you see Esau trying to make moves to censorship, that's the famine of the word. So real soon, you people ain't gonna have no answers, man. All you're gonna do is try to recollect. What did them guys say on them street corners? <laughs> what name did they, what did they, you gonna try to look in your phone, your, your phone been dropped several times, you can't even barely read your text messages, where your text, where, when they told you to put the name in your phone, You've been pussyfooting. That's just what Esau used to say in school. You always pussyfooting. You say that to the other students. You've been pussyfooting all the time, man. Right? Yeah. You was worried about the wrong shit. This is a uh, Psalm chapter nine, verse sixteen. Yahweh Bashim Shai is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higion Salah. Yeah, come on. And who's the wicked? 
Esau and these, and these other nations and two thirds of our people. Can you get, uh, since you're already in Psalms, okay. I think it's uh, 17 verse 13. Oh, yep. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah. This is Psalm chapter 17. Okay. And then when, after that, I get a uh, proverb. I think six and four. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, oh, sure. yeah. This is a song. Or oh, you can hold Job too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You can get, uh, I guess, Job the 20th chapter, man. Okay. This is a song, chapter 17, verse 13. Arise, O Yahweh, by Shinyam Shai. Disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is the sword. Yeah, and there's the what? Three classifications of men, man. The sons of God, which are the Israelites, the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The sons of men, you other nations, and the sons of the wicked, man. The sons of the wicked are controlled by the Heavenly Father, man. Who's on our team, man. Actually, when you go to uh, Proverbs, I believe it's 6 and 4, uh, the wicked is his sword. Yep. Yeah. Which we won't get into there. You know? And then in Revelation 6 and 4, it talks about the red horse. Yeah, yeah. He was given what? A great sword. A great sword. Um, you said Proverbs 6 and 4? Yeah, I believe it's 6 and 4. Uh, it says, give not the... Uh, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think. 16 and 4. Okay. My bad. This is real quick, though. Uh, this is Psalm, uh, it's like your Proverbs 6 and 5. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Which, that's Esau, man. Okay, going into Esau and Genesis, which I had, he was a cunning hunter. Okay, and the also the word fowler means one that sets traps. Which Esau so called why might be doing that. He got a he got a show called what bait car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He trying to trap Jacob, or they be on cops, or they be setting up entrapment, trying to catch men with undercover prostitute women. Yeah, that's that, that's stupid. Man. That's a fowler, man. That's Esau, man, the damn devil. Which the word devil simply means a deceiver, right. slanderer. Here it is, this man will set up these traps and then and then hold you guilty, accuse you. you right, know? and then one of their own does the same shit and they get get away scot free, man. Yeah, get off. Remember that one eating my he, I think he was a, an elite or something. Where he was he got caught molesting his own children, and they said he's he's unfit to go to prison. You can't even molest call his, it, uh, molest his own daughters and shit. Yeah, what do they call it? They have they have something privilege or something. When you're, you're like you like they they don't they don't send you to prison prison clubs and shit because you're too you're you're not you you won't survive in that environment so yeah. to speak. I forget they they have a term for it. It skips the back of my mind, but uh, yeah, there was a kid. In Texas, that fled, that had his mother fled him uh, to uh, Mexico because he drunk drove and killed a whole bunch of people, and they didn't give him prison time because he, they gave him that that term. I forget the term name when you're uh, inf influential or some shit, where they don't put you in prison, man. Yeah, well, one of these uh, Supreme Court judges around here, he uh, his son. His son killed people in a DUI crash, and that that motherfucker didn't do no prison time, bro. But like one of the Israelites, uh, just get caught uh, drunk driving. Let them, you know, let them plead, let them call themselves pleading crazy, man. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't never, I haven't never seen an Israelite plead crazy and actually get that, man. And when we say Israelite. We mean you so-called black Hispanics or Native Americans, even though you don't accept the reality that you're an Israelite, or for those of you that don't even know anything of this truth, 
You know, you're still Israelites, you're so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You so-called Negroes, if you will. Because not everybody that's dark skinned or black is an Israelite. All right, you got Africans, Hamites, they're black, so-called black. But you know, nobody's black, by the way, we're different shades of brown. All right? Um, so I got that uh, in Proverbs. You want it? Okay. This is Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. Yahweh by Shemiah Shai had made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. And yeah, that wicked is talking about Esau, the so called white man. He created him for the day of evil, which we're approaching that time, which is Jacob's trouble. Okay, which the Lord is going to use him to come against two-thirds of our people and attempt to come against us. But when he does, the Lord's going to lift up the standard against him, as the scripture says. But the Lord created everything, even the wicked for the day of evil, which we're approaching that day. It's the great day of the Lord. Because right. the, the word evil doesn't mean wickedness or it doesn't mean anything of the nature. The word evil simply means a bad time. It's going to be a bad time for two-thirds of our people, man. That's what we're telling you right now, to get right. To come back to Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, like, like the last camp we had. We were telling this one uh, one young Iskrite. Now, I don't know if it was a, a male or a female. It was a chick. It was a female. But you could tell, like, her spirit was sodomite-ish. Or, or she was a sodomite. You know? A so-called lesbian, okay, uh, homosexual, right? If you will, you know, for those of you, those of you that don't understand, all right, the word sodom, sodomize, means to go up in a, in, in to have anal, anal sex, which the word sex goes back to procreation. It shouldn't even be used for that. It means to cut. Or, you know, and um, that's why we're heavily rebuke that spirit because it's heavy within our, our uh, nation and amongst two thirds. And if you, you know, you, some of you people out there that are new to this, barely hearing this, you need to stop doing that, man. Because Yahweh, Yahweh Shai will judge you. You know, we've all. We've all went off, we've all done things that are, you know, <laughs> but now's the time to come back to the Lord. At least you die in your sins, man. You know, because there's that one scripture where it says, as such as someone you were. Mm -hmm. You know, abuses themselves of mankind. Because I was heavy in uh, Rome. Rome. You know? They had uh, what you call uh, Saturnalia. And you people, if I could say this, you people are so stupid that it's not Italy and Rome. Yeah, Rome is, is Italy. <laughs> but they say Cornelius is not an Israelite. Then who was Paul speaking to when he went to Rome? Okay. Yeah, the word Cornelius goes back to the word, the name Cornelius goes back to the word seed. Right. You know, which seed of what? Seed of Israel, man. But then again, you can't expect everybody to know geography. Because before Russia even attacked Ukraine, they didn't even know where Ukraine was. Yeah. A lot of you ends. <laughs> you, you know, a lot of you people don't even know where Israel and its proximity to Egypt is, man. Yeah. That's why you can't, oh, how can you take, see, they went to Israel and Egypt on a ship. Yeah. <laughs> they went to, they went to, they, from, man, it's right next to each other, man. But, you know, a lot of you people, I understand because I hated school too, man. But certain subjects was my shit. You know, uh, English, uh, uh, history. I love history, yeah. Geography, you know. I, when I looked at geography, I was like, man, I want to study. I used to sit down the globe in the class and spin the globe. Yeah, that's where I want to go. And I'll look it up, see what it, what's like out there. And yeah, well, the scriptures say what the Lord created. Created the world for our sakes. Yeah, and it, and it also talks about one who has traveled. Oof, has much experience. Has much experience. So I wanted to travel a lot, you yeah, know? Yeah. But a lot of you people, you don't even know your geography. But and Or they'll say, when they were talking about uh, 
the flat earth. Oh man. They were talking about how uh, it takes something about they were trying to equate the three and a half days from going to or uh damn something to the effect it took uh, a year and a half to sell your boat from the Mediterranean to like, you know, Europe or whatever. And it, it don't even take that long, man. Mm -hmm. You know? It would it don't take that it don't even take it takes a, when you actually uh uh do the research, put it in the time, put it, the dedication into it, you know, it takes a year and a half to travel from Israel all the way down the Cape of uh I believe they call the Cape of Africa. Yeah, the Horn uh, of the Cape, yeah. I forget the island that's right there. But South Africa all the way into, you know, the Atlantic, man. All the way to the Americas, man. You know, but hey, that's why this is only for the elect. You know? Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of did go off the rail a little bit on that one, but. Yeah. This is uh, back in Romans, because you mentioned Rome, right? Right. That they were Israelites. So this is Romans 1 and 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of Yahweh by Shemi Shah, called to be saints, grace to you in peace from Yahweh our Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. The only ones that be called saints are Israelites. Okay? And then the Lord only loves Israel. Hey, didn't Paul in the, the ninth chapter say he was a Roman citizen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the, you get so how is Paul a Roman citizen, but uh, Cornelius can't be, uh, what was he, a, a centurion, a, a centurion? A centurion, but he had a title of the Italian band, man. Yeah, which is Italy's in Rome. Italy's in Rome. And a centurion means a captain over 100. Yeah. It's like one cent is a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, fraction yeah. of 100. Yep, yep. So that's what he was. He was a centurion. He was, he was a high rank official officer within Rome. Remember they went to go uh, apprehend uh, Paul and he's like, he's like, don't you know I'm a Roman? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. Spoke, like, oh fuck. Yeah. We can't judge him without the law. Right. Without right. bringing him presenting before Caesar and then. Right. Or before, uh, you know, the uh, court system. Right. You know? and, and you know it's not too far fetched because there's a nigga that's secretary of uh, defense in America right now. Well, yeah, look at uh, what's his name? Powell? No, nah, well, Powell was more. one. Powell was, was one, but right now, uh, yeah, I'm a high level dude. There's a high level nigga in the office in the Biden administration that's a jet, man. I remember a video with Trump. I forget what he was doing, but he's making a speech and he had two big black ass Jakes, one on each side, man, of him. And they were high rank dudes within the military. See, a lot of these jakes out here, they, they believe in Esau's madness when they take that African-American history bullshit in college. Yeah. Which they teach you that we were nothing but a bunch of spirit chuckers, man. And it took us 5,000 years just to travel outside of five-mile radius, man. Which is nothing but pure... What did, uh, what did Peter and fucking the family guy said? He said, my name is Peter Huberberg. Hebrew, uh, 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 make, make or take a lot of money or something. <laughs> yeah, because it's written by them damn small hats, man. Yeah. So they're pushing out that uh, white supremacy, man. <laughs> I should have been rolling earlier. I was looking it up. Because <laughs> he's like, what's your Hebrew name? <laughs> God. Which they don't speak real Hebrew, they speak Yiddish, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did Tahar say it was? I forgot. It's like a hillbilly Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, bouncing back, unless you have some more. No, I'm just holding breath away, sir. Okay, bounce back to this real quick. Because it wasn't really heavy. Uh, this is Psalm chapter 119 and 126. I like that scripture, man. Man, that's heavy. 
He says, It is time for the Yahubashim Yahushai to work, for they have made void thy law. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Revelation chapter. I'll start at you. You want me to start at the top? Yeah. It's pretty much we're in all these horses. Uh, I'll start at the top. This is Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard it were the noise of thunder. It's lucky. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on me had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We're just talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay. Yahweh Shai. All right. Then, then uh, Benjamin, they call him what? The conquering lion of Judah. Mm -hmm. You know, and Yahweh Shai, he's going to come out soon. He's that white horse to back it up real quick. This is uh, Revelation 19 and 11. Mm -hmm. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of Yahweh, just like you read in. in First John, John chapter one. Wow. You know, that's that's talking about Yahweh Shai. Because when Yahweh Shai makes his second coming, you know, his grand appearance, as it tells you in Revelation one and one and seven, one and eight, yep. that all eyes that see him are gonna are gonna bug out. Because when he comes in, he's gonna come in with wrath, bro. He's gonna come with the with the with the host of heaven. That white horse he's sitting on, gonna ride in with. I'm not talking about a pony, it's not talking about a Pegasus, man. Right. It's talking about a grand chariot. Yeah. The father shit, a so-called UFO. Yeah. And it's gonna be called white because it's gonna be glowing, it's gonna be illuminating, man. When you actually look at the word white, you know, it actually means glowing, man, with power. Right. Just like if you see in the in the in the in the camera, you know, right next to this brother in the background in the kitchen is is it's illuminating, it's glowing. Right. You know, <laughs> keep going. And the elements have their own illumination to them too. Exactly. And then when you go into uh, the Old Testament, it talks about we're going to have a glow. Yeah. But when you look at that word glow, and it, it, it's heavy, you know. Um, what you got right there, bro? I'm uh, going to look at that word for what? Revelation uh, 6 and 2. It's Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. I'm going to get the, co the, the word for white. Right. It should be Lucios or something like that. Yep. Lucos. Lucas. 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 Light, bright, brilliant. Of the garments of angels and of those exalted in splendor of the heavenly state. Shining or white worn on festive or state occasions of the whitening color of white, ripening green. And it just means to glow, you know, like you have that dude, uh, Luke Skywalker, you know, which was what, a Jedi. Which Jedi goes back to what, Yahweh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, who's me, bro? Oh, God. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's that, Shona? <laughs> uh, Shona. He's a samurai, brother. Well, they're in bad, though. Yeah. Shona. Yep. But, uh, mm -hmm. going back to Revelation chapter 6, and I'm going to read verse 3. It says, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast said, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set the wrong to take peace from the earth. Mm -hmm. And that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Which that red horse is talking about Esau. Okay, Esau is Edom. Remember, Edom, Edom means red, Adawam. All right, that red horse, a horse represents power, and Esau's in power right now. 
And since he's been placed in power through his military might, he's conquered the world and now all these other nations, in order for them to be somewhere in this world, well, they have to adopt his, his way of life, which is to be violent, which is to go to war. That's why in this world today is been but war going on, man. Okay, you look all over, it's just war. In Venezuela, South America is war. You look at Europe right now with Russia, and what's going on there, or oh, China. It's just war right now. Oh, in the Middle East especially, amongst the so-called Jews and the Palestinians. What's going on in Syria? Okay, Iran, which is Persia, getting involved. It's just world war, man. It's just chaotic. Okay. Because according to the scriptures, okay, what is it? Uh, uh, Proverbs 29 and 2. Yeah. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. Right. You know, there's nothing but mourning, chaos, violence going on because there's damn devils in power, man. It's like red versus brown. Shit. But they'll say white versus black. Yeah. Because that's what you got right now. You got these Edomite nations, the NATO and the EU, mm -hmm. going against the BRICS. Yeah. Which pretty much the BRICS, everyone excluding Russia, Russia. are dark skinned nations. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And like I said at camp, every simulation that they did. As far as war gaming, the BRICS always beat the NATO and the EU because we're in a time of Esau's destruction, man. Yeah, man that's true. And then who's going to beat the BRICS? Well, Shiloh's coming, man. Yeah, yeah. It says, and another realm. Oh, yeah. When you read in 2 Ezra, and what Ezra saw, he saw a ship that was the size of a mountain. And they had photos of a ship the size of a mountain too yeah. that NASA captured on his feed, but they got it cut off. Yeah. Your house might already be here. <laughs> he just haven't manifested himself yet by cracking those clouds. Yeah. Well, as the scripture says, you know, nobody knows that time. Look at that right there, bro. In that in that Sinai. Right. Bro, that's heavy, bro. And that's where the chariot landed. Or, or, or hovered over Mount Sinai, and 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 when the Lord, when the Lord hovered over that place, it said it burned the mountain. You actually, you actually have uh, Google images where you can look at Mount Sinai and it's burned, bro. It's chill to this day. It's black as fuck because the Lord, the chariot was so intense right there, huh? Yeah, but these assholes will say that the Bible is. Right. Fairy tale. Yeah. Well, look at uh, uh, the Suez Canal. Right. So called Red Sea, this chariot wheel still down there, man. Or even Mount uh, Ar Arafat? Ararat. Ararat. Okay. Yeah, that's that's where the ark was. They found that too? Yeah. <laughs> Which anything submerged in water will be considered a boat, it can be considered a ship. And right. they, they unearthed it. And it was when they did the measurements, it was exactly how it describes it being in the, in the scriptures, man. Mm -hmm. That's heavy, man. Hey, the scriptures are real, man. You know, Yahweh Bashimi and Shai is going to manifest himself, man, before you people's eyes, man. That's what we're telling you to take heed, as the scripture says, to give, give you warning from him or of him. Right. Because when the Lord comes back, if you if you weren't, if you weren't taking heat, man, he's gonna kill you, man. He's gonna be like uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. What you gonna do, brother? I roll round on you. <laughs> the scripture says the Lord, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna shout. Yep, like a travailing woman. He gonna, he gonna wail, man. He gonna fucking, yeah, fuck, you know. Battle cry. That's what our people are going for. Yeah, but especially he's, Benjamin. Yeah, what did what did Esau do? Hoorah! Yeah. All that fucking but they got that from the Spartans. Well, the Spartans were Jakes. Jake. Lost the Madonians. Yeah. When you read the Apocrypha, it says they are of the stock of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And they are they were our, our brethren. You know? Which a lot of them was, was Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. And you know, even going into that history, uh I think they I think that history is uh 
is it pre Alexander or after or after Alexander? It was after well, around the same time because they were city states. Yeah, that's so what I'm going into. Part of Alexander's military. Yeah, that's what I'm going into. There were city states because Greece was multicultural. And when you when you slot for go ahead, was, bro. But even in the New Testament, it mentions Troas. Yep. But you look up Troas, that's Troy, which were the Trojans. I believe they were, uh, no, go ahead. Where you get uh, that movie uh, Troy with Achilles, mm-hmm. Red Bit. Right, right. Those right. were Jakes, bro. Those were Israelites. It's just like you got the football, football right now, right? They were just different football teams, different, different militaries, man. But they were all under uh, Greece. Right. But what I was going into is that the, the, the city state of Sparta, they hated those Edomite <laughs> states of Greece, man. Yeah, like the Guineans. Yeah, and the Guineans call them boy lovers. And because they were. Yeah. You know? So they always had like a separation from, you know, their society and kind of like, uh, what's the word? Abhor? Factions. Kind of like abhor in their, the yeah. other societies. They despise each other, you know? You know? Because it was mainly, you know, Jake, Jake was off, but Jake still like see things, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. His motherfuckers is, you know? Out there, oh, out there popping each other, each other. Yeah, just like even in that movie, he was like, I should have marched my women out here. <laughs> Judging by what I see, I'm like, what type of you know my woman is gonna go out there and fight niggas, man? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just something that Jake women would do, man. Mm-hmm. That's why you have a movie coming out called The Woman King, man, which is going off. Or you have the movie Prey coming out. Which yeah. one? Prey. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We were talking about that too. Yeah. You got the woman. And she's trying to be the fucking the chief. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's going out and making moves. Yeah, same thing with this. It just mirrors the, the, the woman king, man. Right? You know, which you know damn well that wasn't going on back then again. Okay? okay, there wasn't no woman chief back then or, or a woman trying to make a name like that, man. Right, right. Their asses were staying home, bro, cooking dinner, sewing clothes, making teepees and shit. Praying to get pregnant. Yeah. They weren't out there doing that. That was a man thing, bro. Show you that in the movie Apocalypto. The woman was staying home. She was childbearing, bro. Yeah. She was doing what a woman was designed to do. You know, a woman's job was not to go out and go to war and do things like that. A, wo- a woman is supposed to be like a dog. And yeah. what, a, what I mean like that, she's when you know you you come home, your dog is all happy to see you yeah. and jumping all around and trying to make you feel as, well, not a dog, but you, she's supposed to make you feel as comfortable, have the house cleaned up, yeah. have the children together, have the meal cooked, you know what I mean? That was and, her job. and after you get situated, she situates you, then she go takes a shower and she she waiting in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and women did have skills and crafts and they did make their own money, but it wasn't like today where this woman's out all fucking day, all night, fucking calling her. <laughs> no, man, it wasn't like that. Well, talking, yeah, call, well, I'd rather call, not text. Yeah. We're all in a relationship. But she sure as hell wasn't going to war. Now, when you read the scriptures, you know, the Lord did use, utilize certain women to, to smack niggas, but that was rare, you know? And it was uh, for a purpose. Yeah. Let me, let me yeah, read that scripture. <laughs> uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil in the wine. Okay. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth be said, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Yeah, that's the times that we're in right now. We're approaching, you know. We're, we're 
you know, all these judgments that the Lord prescribed for this world, man, he mentioned they're gonna, people are going to start killing each other with the sword. That's World War Three. He mentioned famine. Yeah, well, well, the black horse is uh, famine. Yeah, it breaks down into judgment and slavery, dealing with the, the, the oh. scales and balances as far as the yokes. The measure of the uh, the penny for a measure is going into the famine too. Basically, mirroring uh, Second Ezra's the 16th chapter. You know, when you when you break down those certain words like the scales and it's basically judgment, which that's what we're in right now. We're in a time of judgment. We're in a time of famine, and then the the pale her the pale horse is just a byproduct of that, you know, which is death. You know, there's gonna as it says in Second uh, Ezra, the 15th chapter, uh, also in Lamentations, it speaks about it's better that they that die by the sword than they that die by famine, man. Yeah. You know, it so also, it also said much in the scripture too. That all faces shall shall uh, gather paleness. Mm -hmm. You know, represents you giving up the ghost. Yeah, you know? and also fear. Yes, yeah. People when you, when people uh, are in fear, they turn they're like a greenish pale. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they're afraid, man. Yeah. They'll say you turn, uh, you start to turn cold before you, before you die. You, you know, your spirit, because uh, your spirit leaves your body, your spirit's fire and heat. And uh, what comes with that, you know, your body becomes cold, you get lighter. I think you lose like uh, 21 degrees when your spirit leaves your body. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's what the times we're in. We're in the time of the horses galloping. Even on that video game Warzone, they got uh, a series of characters you can play called the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, man. So the spirit is pushing that vibration out onto you people, man. Uh -huh. You know? So we're at the time of the end. That's why you have uh, uh, God, which is, uh, which uh, we believe is Putin. You know, may God be in Russia. They're making moves now, man. Uh -huh. You know, and those Russians, you know, they're Edomites too. You no, know, I'm not saying that there's not Israelites that are not scattered among them. You know, but those are Edomites too. You got a uh, Ezekiel? No, I was gonna get that in uh, your boy, yeah, yeah, boy, I did have Ezekiel 38. You get it. Start at 39. Uh 39 chapter? Yeah, not one. Cause uh a lot of you people, you think that uh See, a lot of you people, you don't understand that the Heavenly Father is in control of all these things, man. Right? You know? You think that uh, Russia is being bogged down in Ukraine. You don't even know the war tactics and what Russia, the Russian army is implementing in Ukraine. They're not out there to, you know, completely wipe Ukraine off the map, man. Right? You know, Ukraine is vital as well, man. Right? They know the importance of that land mass. They know the EU knows the importance of trying to take over Ukraine because it'll be easier to defeat Russia. Because when you look at the the geography of the terrain, it's just a flatland. You know the mountains, the mountain ranges when it's all cold and you know you know you see sometimes you see uh poon out there hunting fucking animals and shit. That's more towards the east, man, but. Ukraine is like a buffer between NATO and the EU against Russia, man. And the Biden administration, the Biden family was trying to put their their, their pedophile feet in there and trying to, you know, uh, bring NATO closer to Russia and also, you know, cut Russia off from supplying uh, the EU with gas and natural resources, man. You know, which is all strategic. So uh, the dumb, the dumb niece and the, 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 the Hanks, what, that reason which the uh, rec Russia recognized back in, the, I believe it was in February. You know, that was just something to, you know, say, okay, this is, we're, we're going to go in now. But it was bigger than that. Man. 
That's why they had the Nord Stream 1, the Nord Stream 2. What was the first thing Biden wanted to do? He wanted to stop all that. Well, we're going to sanction it. We're going to cut. We're going to stop the pipelines. <clears throat> we're going to what, what was pissing off Britain. Yeah. That's why eventually the scripture says that the beast shall hate the whore. And this is the reason why the beast, well, I believe the beast is going to hate the whore. Because you're destroying her. You're destroying her. You fucking with, you fucking with business, bro. Fucking with, when you fuck with a person's money, that's your ass, man. Yeah, you bad for business. You know, you fucking with, like, the mob. These, these countries are just different mob bosses, you know? Right. You know what I mean? And that's how Esau does, but Esau's playing this on a higher level. He's playing it uh, on the level of the rich elite bankers. The rich elite bankers are just putting everybody in the prison yard against each other. Yeah. Just as they do prison, the, the CEOs and the warden, they put all the different races against each other. And they got them different races, they communicate with one another. Yeah. You know? So it's, they, they, they're trying to play, play, you know, play with your people, man. Mm -hmm. So you can walk. Fucking go to war with one another. And then they're gonna come out of the ashes. They want to come out. Yeah, they want to come out of the ashes yeah. and try to, you know, rule everything, but yeah. really we're gonna dig their ass up and put them in chains and shackles, man. Yeah. Just That's as they're putting on a shirt, they're gonna be putting a yoke on their neck on their necks, man. Let me get that in Ezekiel. Yeah, you start at the top. Alright, this is Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 1. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against God. And say, Thus saith the Lord, Power, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai. Behold, I am against thee, O God, the yeah. chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. He's against a Russia ultimately, man. But as it says in Proverbs, the 21st chapter, he's stirring the mind of those leaders the way he wants them to think, man. And what he's putting in their mind to do is to do things that are actions of war. Because he's bringing all these nations together. He said he's going to gather the nations, pursuing the Zephaniah, the third chapter, and pour upon them his indignation. You know? Uh, what does the word plead mean again? It means to judge. To plead means to, uh, I thought it meant to, to, to beg, don't it? In the, in the sense of, uh, no, pray means to beg. Okay. I think plead, to plead with you means to judge you. If I'm not mistaken, you know, when he talks about he's going to plead with all flesh, he's going to plead with you by putting you to death. Okay. You know? Can you get, uh, keep going? Okay. Unless you're looking for something. It says, and I will turn thee back and leave, but the sixth part of thee. Yeah, so when you think about he's going to turn you back, but leave, but the sixth, because there was a point in time Russia was trying to be cool, but now Russia's like, fuck you. You know, and by him leaving but the sixth part in him, meaning only a sixth part of the Russian army is going to stay in Russia, man. Now, when you do the math, a sixth part of 100 is only 16.5%, man. Roughly there, I'll just, you know, round it to the, the nearest number. I'll just say six, only 16% of the Russian army, the Russian Federation army is going to stay in Russia, man. And the rest of that army is going to be fucking the NATO and the EU up, Israel up, and then invading America. You already got troops positioning in the southern border, man. Yeah, I remember the Elder Malcolm uh, years back, because um, he does El uh, MMA, and he was training a whole bunch of dudes that came from Russia. Yeah, that old Russian accent. Mm -hmm. And they were pretty much telling them that, th that they were pretty much sleepers. Yeah, that, I've been heard about that. Yeah, that they, they've been stationed here or placed here as sleepers. Like, they, when the shit goes down, they're going to use them for terrorism or insurgency yeah. to cause fucking havoc here, man. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them. I was working uh, there's a lot of Sacramento too. Bro, they're all over California because I would chop it up with them uh, while I was at work and there'd be a lot of truckers that are fucking Soviet man, they're the Russian nut. Yeah. And they 
seem like just regular people. They're, they're polite to you. But they're going to be utilized to fucking combat you people, man. Yeah. And it's not just the Russians out here either. No, no, you got, you got all these, you got all these nations you done uh, gave the shit into the stick. Remember that that talk something but carry a big stick that you saw saying in the uh, World War One, World War Two. I forgot. I think Teddy Roosevelt said that shit. Yeah, yeah you've been giving these nations the shit into that stick, man. <laughs> they want payback. Yep. It says, it says um, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Yeah, they're going to come from the north parts, man. Right? Yeah. You know? They're in the northern hemisphere. They're going to come, they're going to come to America because America is where the Israelites are, but also they're going to destroy the land of Israel too. That's why when you when you go to these alternative news uh, channels, or the websites in particular like Devka, which means your news in Hebrew, or you even go to Jerusalem Post, JP Post, it talks about there being friction between Israel and Russia now. Okay. And what's really holding Israel back from even attacking Iran is that they're doing a transition of uh, government now. You know, I forgot the, the name of the party, I think it was the Kensit party or something like that. That's uh, being led by uh, Naftali Bennett. You know they're resigning, man, and they're trying to pass laws. You know to allow someone that's going to prison for what, uh, bribery, which is Benjamin Netanyahu. You know to be able to run again to become the wartime president again, so they can strike Iran's nuclear facilities, man, and that's going to piss Russia off. Okay. Because by that time, Iran has probably already gained membership to the BRICS nations. So now you're fucking with their world order. You see, these nations is tired of you so-called white people, man. And then you're going to be looking all around trying to see who's going to be on your side. And it ain't going to be nobody. <laughs> It's like the big bully is like he getting knocked down and everybody's ganging up against him and he gets up and he's gonna see who's gonna help him out. Yeah. He ain't got nobody to help him, man. I don't know, it's like when somebody gets jumped. Yeah. The, the big somebody drops the, the fucking bully and then everybody throwing kicks in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody wants part of that, man. This is uh and you can jump back to 38, that's all I really want. Okay. Like that. All right. Just to show that, you know. Before that, I'm gonna get this. Yeah. Uh, Russian army is gonna be doing, getting busy, man. This is uh, Luke chapter 11 and verse, I'm gonna start at 17. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. Mm -hmm. And you saw his kingdom is divided, man, within America and with his own allies, man. You know, a lot of his own allies are giving in to certain uh, demands by the United States as far as sanctioning Russia, man. God. And the whole reason why NATO was established in the first place was to combat or come against the Soviet Union, or the USSR, if you will. So you can see it from that standpoint that that Satan's kingdom, Esau's kingdom, is divided. Right. You got Russia against NATO. That's the big thing going on right now. Okay, it's Russia's moving in, moving further uh, west. Right. You know, that's the big thing. That's what's going to We're already in World War III, man. This is the third war. Okay, as it speaks about in Revelation chapter 11, 14. The second woe has passed, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. Right. Which is World War III. And I think uh, I was watching a Canadian prepper. Just not get your uh, Earlier today, and I think he was uh, talking to this 
Joel Skousen, who was speaking about how uh, there was a explosion in Oklahoma, man, and that it could very well have been um, a terrorist attack as far as, uh, you know, uh, cyber, like not a ter- well, we could call it a terrorist attack, but more so of a cyber attack, man. And it's not being reported in uh, main, mainstream media, man. So there's a lot of things that is going on that are simply not even being reported, man. You know? And as they did mention, there's Iran, you got Iran, you got Russia, and you got China that are stationing troops, you know, on the southern border of uh, America. And not just that, you had them commissioning the, the Bulgara. You know, a super uh, nuclear power submarine that is capable of uh, carrying their new state-of-the-art Poseidon missile, you know, which is really a torpedo that has a, a, a yield of 100 uh, megatons, man. Now, if you want to know the, the force of 100 megatons, it's two czar bombs, which was the most powerful explosion which came at 50 megatons known to man. So if this uh, torpedo was to be shot on the seabed floor, it would cause a tsunami that's 500 meters high, man. You know, which uh, surpasses all the heights of the skyscrapers. (laughs) Which surpasses all the heights of the skyscrapers in the United States. The only building that's uh, taller is uh, taller than 500 meters is the uh, building that's 828 meters that's built in Dubai, man. You know, which Saudi Arabia is going to come against you, you devils too, man. They're trying to join the BRICS, you know. And then after that, it's a wrap. You know, so Russia has uh, the power to or were given the power by Yahweh Bashir Yahweh Shah, you know, to complete the mission, man. Yeah, that's true. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 13 and verse. Oh, I was, I was, in, I was just about to bring it up. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I thought, no, you're already there. You already started reading. It's Revelation chapter 13. Oh, you're in Revelation. I mean, it's like yeah, Isaiah 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Yeah, and the Medes occupied that land, you know, but now that land is being occupied by Russia, you know, so in that particular verse, the Medes is the Russians and they're being stirred up, man. We shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Yeah, when they shoot their missiles out on this place, they ain't shoot, they ain't selling all the cargo ships and they fleet to go try to uh, excavate all the, the riches out of this place before they nuke the hell out of it, man. They ain't looking at trying to make no deals. They ain't, they ain't worried about money. Okay. What they're worried about real soon is just going to be destroying this place, man. Okay, they ain't going to give a fuck about any, anything, any resources here. They're just going to wipe this shit off. Says their bows also, which bows is referring to their uh, nuclear arsenal, man. Okay, their silos. Right. Because those arrows, modern day arrow, is is nukes. They had that movie called What Broken Arrow. Right. I was just talking about a nuke that was stolen. Okay, that's a term, a military term for a broken arrow, which is a misplaced or stolen uh, a missile, man. It says, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, which is America, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when Yahweh by Shimei was shy over through Sodom and Gomorrah. Which you go back into Genesis 18, 19, mm-hmm. and read about what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah for its wickedness. It was destroyed by fire and brimstone. Just heavy because 
You know, the UK, they got a, they got a missile. It's called the Brimstone. Brimstone missile. All right. Show you that the Lord, he had that technology back then, but it was much different. He had fire come out the sky, which those nukes, they don't come out the sky, man. And, and nukes, they detonate in mid-air. They detonate before they even touch the warheads. You know, the Russians are going to use these missiles, man. They got what, Satan 2 or Sarmat. Same one. Same one is a, uh, it ain't no slouch missile, man. Mm -mm. Same one could take out the whole state of Texas <laughs> or the whole country of France. Fucking Putin just, just threatened. You said you guys keep fucking around, we're gonna let these things off. You said, what well, four I can do, you guys? Yeah. With four, with four missiles. Because each missile, the warhead, can equip up to 16 nukes, or 16, uh, one missile can equip up to 16 warheads, which the power, as the scripture says in Revelation 9, the power is in their heads and their tails, which is talking about the warhead. You know? That's what caused that devastation. We're in the time of the end, man. We're in the time where Yahweh is going to do his works. Through your shot. Yes, sir? Yeah, I got it. Uh, I got it. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Behold, I created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth the instrument for his work. Just like in the ancient world, you had a smith. Today, you got smiths. Okay, you got what? Iron smith. Which is somebody that creates things. A smith is a is a creator, a fashioner. It's like the, the equivalent of a scientist. God, today would be equivalent to a scientist. And back in the ancient world, before to this day, you have blacksmiths, ironsmiths. They deal with creating things with iron. You got a goldsmith. He creates things with gold. Silversmith. You know, these are all different smiths. But the modern day smith is a scientist. And the Lord gave these people the uh, wisdom to do these things. It doesn't look like uh, when you break down the word uh, science, it means to know, right? Yeah. yeah. It's knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge of, of those things. You know, when you read about when they were creating the uh, temple, or not the temple, but the uh, ark and whatnot. Well, the Lord created a, He had a Judah, He gave him the, 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 the knowledge, the science to fashion things of gold. He said he, he made him a goldsmith, you know. The modern day smith of the scientist is nuclear physicist, man. Mm -hmm. What? It says, uh, and I have created the waster to destroy. Which the waster is the missile. Right. Okay. These missiles, these nuclear physicists create these nukes. Because what? And that's ultimately Esau. Because Esau simply means wasted away as he. You know, what was wasted away was his, his pigmentation, his complexion. That's why so called white people are translucent, translucent. But that ties together. He is that waster. He is the, the wicked, the evil. The wicked one for the day of evil. He's the sword. Alright? And the Lord is going to use him to destroy it. These, these Edomites are going to clash with each other, man. They're going to destroy each other, man. And they've done it since the beginning. Of World War I, World War II, World War Three. And when you read that, uh, the 13th Tribe book by Arthur Koresler, I, mean, I, I haven't finished the whole book yet, but when you go into the beginning, it alludes to the fact that there's different factions, mm -hmm. and they're always warring against each other, and they had classes. And I think the the Amal the Amalek were the top ones. Yeah, and they're called they're called Kugans, Kagans. Yeah, and everybody hated there, yeah. <laughs> which you know makes sense. You know, the most filthiest people. And, and even to this day, you've got other Edomites that hate fucking Jews, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know? And 
That's what that's what the World War Two with with, with uh, Nazi Germany. The reason why they were so heavy against Nazi Germany was because they they were so advanced. Okay, yeah, they were so advanced. That's mm -hmm. So that's what they came against. Um, yeah, but uh, you still in the CQ? Uh, I was in Isaiah, but I got a. Oh, it's not good. Oh, you're talking about 38? No, 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 I meant uh, that one you just you finished it? Yeah. 54 and 16? Yeah, I was just going to get the uh, precept in uh, Revelation 9. Okay. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day, and a month, and a year. Or to slay the third part of men. When you read Revelation 7, it goes into those angels as well. And when the elect are sealed, they're going to be loosed. Mm -hmm. which, which represents Yahweh Bashem Shai's judgment, the end. Good. Uh, also, uh, you mentioned Revelation 7. Another precept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another precept would be, I think, is Jeremiah 51 and 1. Uh, a destroying wind. But uh, continuing, it says that the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000. Which, when you do the math, that's 200 million. Huh. 200 million warheads. Right. You know, because each missile can be equipped, equipped with multiple warheads. It's not talking about 200 million nukes, it's 200 million warheads. And it's not talking about 200 million goops either. <laughs> with with fucking uh, what do you call them? Uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call their backpacks? Uh, Nuclear batteries or some shit? Uh, well, uh, I Nuclear heard. backpacks? No, man. Still a missile. Man. I heard of nuclear suitcases, but not backpacks. Yeah, yeah. They call them something. That's like a yeah, good. Well, really, they're not even goose, they're cheeks. Because the chinks are the Chinese. And everybody talks about how they got a billion motherfuckers, but it's not talking about that, man. It says, And I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and adjacent and brimstone. Which is talking about what is encapsulated, which is the, which is the, uh, the rocket, right? And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Yeah, because they're fierce. You think about you think about a missile descending. You know you're gonna be terrified, man. Just like a lion when it shows its teeth. Okay, right. that's the, the the head, man. The head is the weapon. And, and, and look at it. Envision it like this: when you look at a lion and you look at the head, you're like, damn, this shit could do some damage. <laughs> but, and then when you look at a missile and you look at the cone, you're like. Fuck, that's a nuclear missile. It actually can do some damage. It's a terrifying yeah. presence. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it says, And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. But these three was the third part of men killed. Which the third part of men is talking about Esau, the wicked. Like the brother mentioned earlier, you got three classifications of men. You have the sons of God, which are the elect, which are the Israelites. Okay, as it says in Psalms 82 and 6, that ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. Which is talking about the Israelites, the so-called black, Hispanics, Native Americans. And then you got the sons of men, all right, which are the other nations. That's why when you read in Genesis, we're talking about how the giants, which are Israelites, the word giant just simply means like a famous one, mighty man, renowned. renowned man. Okay. They saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and went into them. Okay. Or the, the, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, went into them, created the Nephilim. Yeah. And when you go into our history, even when you like the, a scripture that's coming out of my mind, I'm not going to go get it, but it's in 2 Ezra. And even Tobit's mother told him, Choose a woman of your own nation. Yeah. Because just as Solomon, these women of these other nations are going to lead you to worshiping their gods, man. Which happened to Jake. Oh, yeah, Jake did that. Because he loves his woman. He want to oppress his woman. He want to yeah. be about her. 
trying to win her heart. Yeah. So he taps into the he taps into her spirit. And sometimes they just get you know whooped. Yeah. And then you then you threw like Solomon. See Solomon didn't didn't he wasn't through because he was done with those women. He was through because he tapped into their spirit, to their deities, man. Their vibration. Because the scriptures do talk about we can have concubines of other nations. Right. But he got influenced by this by their spirits. And started doing with their gods. They turned them away from the Lord. I'm trying to think what uh Samuel L. Jackson said in that movie Jews. He said, because he was talking about the snappy nappy dugout too. And he was saying there's something about you're gonna go, uh, you're gonna be flowing on a razor blade going down the alcohol river. Talk about judgment, man. Yeah. These women could bring judgment upon you, man. Yeah, they could have you bug out. Because you're because of that snappy nappy dugout. And, and that happens, man. Yeah. You see a lot of men lose their wits because of a woman. Yeah. yeah. You know? You see a lot of men doing strange things. <laughs> For a woman, things that they don't normally want to do and would do, but you know, please, baby, just do this for me. Mm -hmm. Tugging on your shirt, rubbing on your chest, pulling on your beard, you know what I'm saying? Kissing on your neck, yeah. These women are, uh, these women are, uh, wicked, man. Yeah. But it's locky, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like on the serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And then and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. And that, that just shows you the pride of these damn devils, man. Mm -hmm. Here it is, their whole kingdom's going to be annihilated before their eyes. And they ain't going to repent. They're going to be down on those dumps, which stands for deep underground military bunker. Their, their underground cities. They're going to be down there talking shit the whole time, bro. And that's what we want. That's what we do want. <laughs> we want you to be talking shit. It's going to be so, it's going to be better kicking your ass, man. Exactly. It's going to be sweeter. It's going to be juicier when we get our hands on you, man. Motherfucker talk shit. You want to hit, hit, hit all the teeth. Like in that, uh, when you go to the, uh, those little carnivals and you got to try to shoot the teeth out the crowds, man. You want to knock all the teeth out that motherfucker's mouth. Yeah, I remember when we were young, there was ones where you have a ball. Yeah. And you throw it at the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gonna be throwing fireballs at two pieces of shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It says, uh, neither repented they of their murders. Man, and that, you got a lot of blood in your hands, man. Committed genocide against the Israelites, man. Or at least attempted to annihilate us, man. Right. When Columbus came to the Americas, the Caribbean, he said that motherfucker couldn't leave his sword down for an hour, bro. Man. He was just butchering you and you and so-called indigenous people. Okay, you, you, you tribes of Simeon, Ephraim, uh, you know, uh, who else was Manasseh, Gad, Reuben. Okay. These, these damn devils were butchering us, man. Oh, oh, the, 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 the hatred that Esau had for Judah. Yeah, they were eating Judah. Bro, they, they eat Judah to this day. They call him the delectable Negro. Yeah, they eat Judah to this day. Remember that movie, uh, what was that movie, uh, Let Me Out? Or what was it called? Get they, Out. Get Out. Where they eat him out and said, I love those eyes. I like those eyes. Yeah. They would actually eat certain body parts of Jake to try to uh, inherit uh, the, those strengths. You know? Or, or they say the fucking Queen of England. That old bitch, she be drinking Jake, you know, little little female Jake's blood, man, to maintain their vitality, their youth. Yeah. When you go into the sex magic of Aleister Crowley, he said, in order to bypass doing all those different satanic rituals to get those certain powers, 
all you would have to do is either pop a little boy or or, or pop a little boy and drink their blood, man. Uh, but they they have to be scared. So, so they drink the adrenochrome. Yeah, so yeah. they can drink the adrenochrome, man. The, 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 the blood is a pump with adrenaline. And that shit is supposed to gives you like supernatural fucking, you know, strength. You watch that movie, uh, Fear and Loathing, Las Vegas, or whatever. They show you when they took the adrenochrome, this motherfucker yeah, turned into a monster. Well, look at Blade. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's drinking blood. Yeah, know? when he was in that bag, he came out and just started whooping the whole world's ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the motherfucker jump off the roof talking about he forgot his sword. <laughs> he was whooping motherfuckers ass so bad he forgot his sword, man. <laughs> Drinking all that blood, man. And, and see, he's still got to tap into that left hand. You know, that's all witchcraft, bro. Come on. Jay gonna get that, man. Just, man. Just being the spirit, man. That's why, you know, Man, that's why you just just lean on the Lord, man. Right. It says, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their deaths. So this devil's gonna be so proud he ain't gonna uh, repent from shit. He gonna be he gonna be like the devil's rejects. That motherfucker. When you see this, those three series of movies. I think it started with uh, the House of a Thousand Corpses, then the Devil's Rejects, and then it was another one. I forget. It was the last one because everybody ended up dying and shit in the movie and in real life. But them motherfuckers were ruthless, and they had the spirit of Edomites all over them, man. Yeah, those were Edomites. Uh, they were like camels and shit. Yeah, a Rob Zombie uh, yeah. directed that shit. Jesus. Yeah, he's, uh, he does the, the heavy metal music, and he has a brother called Power Man 5000. Yeah, they dope. I like, I listen to the music. But, uh, you want to try to wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's close it with this one. Oh, you want to? Yeah, we'll do it. Let's do it. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this... Shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Yeah, World War Three, man, it's gonna be good. Nukes. Nukes. Duke Nukem. Yeah. And, Duke Duke. and what is it? What was what was, what was the Dukes? Yeah. It was Esau, man. Yeah. Duke Nukem. Yeah, they didn't have kings, they had Dukes. Right. Dukes of Edom. You know, so with that, uh, we wanna give all praises to your how washing oh, outside. Uh uh, Shem HaRakah Kadash, uh, Yahweh Shah these one brother of the elect was edified, and I'm going to say Shalom. Uh, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Uh, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Shalom. Shalom.